We talk a lot about shadows in drawing, but it's super important to also think about how light reflects off different surfaces. That determines highlights and other things that we need to see for figure drawing, landscapes or objects. This time we're going to train our eyes by observing things we would see during daily life and also by doing studies of some master artist drawings as well. Hi, my name's Kenzo and this is Love Life Drawing. So broadly speaking, we can think about two types of reflection, diffuse reflection and specular reflection. And those sound like tricky terms, but you'll be really familiar with both of them. So to explore that, I gathered all this scientific equipment. And once we've explored both types of reflection, we'll think about what it all means for how we draw people. So specular reflection is what you normally think of when you say the word reflection your face in the mirror, the really bright bits on something shiny. It just means that light rays are bouncing off a smooth surface, smooth at the microscopic level, so that the light rays bounce off the surface like this. A lot of surfaces are not smooth enough to give out a lot of specular reflection. When the surface is rough at that microscopic level, the light bounces off it, but it bounces off in all different directions. So something like a piece of paper, it seems quite smooth, but actually at that microscopic level, it's pretty rough. So most of the reflection on it is diffuse reflection. And a lot of the stuff that we see in the world, we're seeing because of diffuse reflection, like my t-shirt or this sofa. With specular reflection, you can see a lot about the light source itself, even its shape. With diffuse reflection, that information is lost because the light is scattered all over the place. So diffuse reflection lets you see the object itself better. Like with glossy paper, I get a lot of specular reflection if there's a lot of sunlight. So it's hard to read in that strong direct sunlight. But if it's just normal matte paper, which is gonna have more diffuse reflection and not much specular reflection, it's much easier to see the object itself. It's much easier to read the page. For diffuse reflection, your eyes could be here or here. As long as the light can reach your eyes, the lighting on the thing is gonna look pretty much the same. It's pretty evenly scattered. If your eyes are here, they get some light. And if they're here, they get some light. Specular reflection though, differs based on where your eyes are. So here you'll get this light, almost like it's coming direct from the light source. But here you won't get the light. So to know if you're seeing specular or diffuse reflection, you can move your head a little bit and see if the light moves as you do. See if the reflection moves as your eyes move. And if it does, it's specular reflection. So how bright the diffuse reflection is just depends on how strongly and directly the light is hitting the object. So on this ball, the light is hitting strongest here and that's the brightest part in terms of that diffuse reflection. We can move the camera around like this and that's still the brightest spot on the ball. But the specular reflection on this ball is not about where the light is hitting strongest. It's about where the light is hitting so that it will bounce right off into our eyes or in this case into the camera. And that reflection tends to be really bright. During daily life, you can see all sorts of mixtures of these two types of reflection out in the world. So some surfaces have a lot of specular reflection like this toaster. Some things have almost no specular reflection and only diffuse reflection like this tea towel. Some surfaces have mostly diffuse reflections with a little bit of specular. So you might see a lot of art tutorials that explain light using a sphere with some diffuse and some specular reflection, just like this. Now you might notice with rounded surfaces or surfaces with more planes, like the rounded corner of something, somewhere on that surface, you'll often find a specular reflection quite easily. And I think that's because there are more planes reflecting light at more angles. It's not flat, which would just be one plane reflecting light at one angle you got lots of different angles that the light is bouncing off the curve at. Um, and that's gonna be relevant when we see reflections on people. So I kind of got a little bit confused when I was looking at Maggie's fur because she's very shiny 
Um, her fur has that must have that smoothness at the microscopic level to reflect light in that specular way. But somehow she's really shiny across a lot of her fur, even in places where you wouldn't expect specular reflection. I think I figured out why. So here's my explanation. If you're a physicist or something and you can confirm or correct me, just let me know in the comments. So firstly, she's not just a flat surface or a smooth surface. The surface of her fur is made up of lots of little fibers and each one is its own 3D shape. So I wanted to understand what was happening. So I used the rounded handles of these table knives, thinking that they're a little bit like her fur, but made bigger. And each handle has a curved surface which reflects light in that specular way in lots of different directions. We see specular reflection from the lamp on this flat metal thing from this angle and also on the knife handles. But when I move the camera, that flat metal thing doesn't have that reflection, but the knife handles still do. We still see it from this angle. So I think Maggie's fur is like a load of these knife handles sending me specular reflections from a variety of angles all over her fur. Another thing here is the reflections become a line cutting across the handles. So the same thing happens when I get a line of reflections ac cutting across her fur. And then we saw that in our hair drawing tutorial with uh, Frank Gambino, highlights on straight hair tend to cut across the direction of the strands. And then with this brushed metal, I think roughly the same thing's happening. It's got that grain going this way, and then the specular reflection cuts across that. So I think our skin, human skin, is pretty tricky to understand in terms of reflections because we've got both diffuse and specular reflections happening on our skin and the specular reflection seems to be quite subtle often. Um, and I think that's because our skin has that texture to it so the specular reflection is not as clear cut as it would be on something like metal. You can see the specular reflection a bit more clearly on people with darker skin. As I move the camera, you can see some of these light areas moving around or disappearing on my skin here. Our bodies are made up of curved 3D shapes going in various directions. There's a lot of roughly cylindrical shapes especially. So where there is all that plane changing, like we saw with the knife handles, it's likely that there's gonna be some part of those curved surfaces that happen to be at the right angle to bounce light from the light source right into our eyes and we'll get some specular reflections. So you'll often get highlights to draw where planes are turning on the figure. Here Mako's doing some studies of a drawing, one by Leonardo da Vinci and another by Jacob Jordanes or Jacob Jordans, according to the internet, I think. I'm sorry about the pronunciation. Often when drawing on white paper, you'll merge bright areas, whether it's diffuse reflection or specular reflection, you leave it all with the white of the paper. They're different, but in the end, the real important difference in the drawing is the difference between the light areas and the dark areas in the shadows. But if you can find a way to bring out the really bright specular reflection or the bright bits of the diffuse reflection as well, it helps to add to that 3D feel of your drawing. You got the dark shaded areas pushing back into the drawing, and you've got the more bright areas coming forward in the drawing and it helps to give that 3D feel. Ideally, you can do it without compromising the more important contrast between the big shapes of the light areas and the big shapes of the shaded darker areas. That's the most important contrast, but then if you can, within the light areas, bring out some of the highlights, it really adds a lot. A great way to do this is to draw on toned paper. Then you can use white to bring out the highlights and your charcoal or something like that for the dark areas. Areas of less bright diffuse reflection, they can stay with that neutral toned paper. So that's roughly what Mako is doing here in these studies. It's something that we demonstrated more fully in a video about the traqueon method, again the pronunciation, which I'll link to below. That was a good video. The lines of these highlights can really help explain the shapes that we're looking at. Because we're asking people's eyes to interpret our marks, which are on a 2D surface, 
we're asking them to interpret them as 3D shapes. So the more clues we can give the, their eyes, the better. And the highlights can help in two ways. So the way that the highlights run over the surface help to explain the volume, just like the edges of the shadow shapes do. And then secondly, where we put our highlights explain which bits are all at this specific angle to the light source. You might keep your white highlights just for the specular reflections that you're seeing, um, or you could use it also for the brightest areas in the diffuse reflection too. We don't have the original references to look at with these studies, but as she did these, Mako felt that Leonardo da Vinci was keeping his highlights quite faithfully to more specular reflection, whereas Jacob was using the white more liberally for all the fairly bright areas on the figure. If you didn't want to use toned paper, some artists like to apply a lot of mid-tone right across the paper. So you could do that, for example, with the side of a stick of charcoal, and then use an eraser to let the white of the paper show through just for the highlight areas. So there are many beautiful ways to draw. There are so many amazing visual phenomena to see during daily life. I hope you enjoyed this edition of our Training Your Artist Eye series. Maybe take a few moments during your days to notice some of these different reflections. There are more cool videos on the screen. Check one out and I'll see you next time.